So we're in this creepy-ass cemetery where anacondas just roam around all willy-nilly. And this gravedigger sees a light in the abandoned mansion on the property, and he goes to kick out what he thinks is a couple teenagers. Bloody kids. But when he goes upstairs, he sees Peter Pettigrew and the lead singer of The Cure talking to what looks like Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. He tells them to send out invites to a reunion, and then the anaconda sneaks past the gravekeeper and lets who we find out is baby Voldemort know he's there. So he kills him? Eh, he just casts a spell that boils tea. But Harry must have heard the kettle because he has a nightmare about it. Hermione walks in and comforts him, and then wakes up Ron, who's very self-conscious about his man boobs. I read all about them. And then they go for a walk with the rest of the Weasleys. They meet up with the Diggories, Amos, and his son Cedric, who likes to hang out in trees. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> He's more than an athlete. Oh, He's an artist. They're hiking to find this old shoe that will teleport them to the Quidditch World Cup. When it starts spinning around like a carnival ride, luckily no one gets motion sickness and barfs on everyone. <laughs> but they do let go and fall hundreds of feet on their faces. Well, the Hogwarts kids do, but Arthur and the Diggories float safely down by running in place. Later that night, they go to the match, where they bump into the Malfoys. Lucius hits Harry, and it oh so subtly hints that he's gonna die soon. And apparently, it's a big deal that they got tickets, but it looks like every magic user in the world might be there. The match is between the Irish, who seem to love their stereotypes, and the Bulgarians, who love this guy Victor Crumb, and apparently nothing else. The game starts and ends without us really knowing who won, and a bunch of Death Eaters come to the weird Renaissance Fair tailgate and set it all on fire. And even though everyone in attendance is a magic user, not a single person tries to stop them. They just run away screaming. What are Death Eaters? Well, they're a group of people who follow Voldemort, but they dress like another group of bad historical people. What are you doing after this? Going to a clan meeting? And I guess they eat death. Oh no, I'm not hungry, thank you. But they're setting everything on fire, and Harry gets separated from the Weasleys and knocked out. He wakes up and sees the emo dude from the mansion, who calls upon the Aurora Borealis of Voldemort to check out the damage. Ron and Hermione find Harry, and they almost get arrested for arson, but Arthur comes along and points out to this magic cop, Barty Crouch, that they're just children that were babies when Voldemort was killed, and one of them actually killed Voldemort, which makes them even less likely to be Death Eaters. So they let him go. When they get to Hogwarts, we find out that they're hosting the Triwizard Tournament, and this means that two other schools will be staying with them during the competition. There's the Bobatton Academy, an all-girls school that teaches them to fart butterflies. Bloody hell. And the all-boys school, Durmstrang, who enter with some macho breakdancing. Don't act like you're not impressed. So they're going to have a random drawing on Thursday to see which children are going to face possibly deadly challenges. Happy Hunger Games! even though it seems pretty damn obvious who the other schools have picked. So they can only pick one student per school, and you have to be old enough to put your life on the line. So any moron over 17 that thinks they're a good wizard can enter. And may the odds be ever in your favor. The next day, the kids go to meet the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, Mad-Eye Moody, and he teaches them about the three unforgivable curses. They are unforgivable. He shows them the Imperious Curse that allows you to control things against their will. The Cruciatus Curse, that tortures things. It's bothering him! Stop it! And the Killing Curse, which, you know, allows you to kill stuff. Which apparently is so bad that this is the only time Hermione won't answer a question when she knows the answer. Are you incapable of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? And this is the spell that Voldemort used on Harry as a baby that only seemed to leave him with a scar on his forehead. The demonstration gave Neville PTSD, and since the Killing Curse also boils water, Moody invites him up for tea. Professor Sprout tells me you have an aptitude for herbology. A bunch of kids are signing up for the death tournament, including Cedric, Crumb, and Fred and George, even though they're not old enough to enter. But they drink an aging potion and put their names in the fire. But the magic can smell their underage bullshit and throws them across the room onto a stone floor. Oh, well, now you know. So Thursday comes around, and they draw names from the goblet. So Crumb, Cedric, and this chick we've never met, Floor, all get selected to compete. But then the goblet spits out Harry's name too. So Dumbledore, with the calmness of a Hindu cow, asks Harry if he put his name in. Did you put your name in the goblet of fire? But he's not old enough. Right. But there are still four wizards in the Tri-Wizard Tournament. It'd be a lot different if it picked him instead of Cedric, and not in addition to. But then Hogwarts gets two people? I know. 
But even though they have human rules in place and he didn't even enter, they're like, we have to listen to the cup because even though it can't count, it's magic and doesn't make mistakes. The Goblet of Fire constitutes a binding magical contract. But how could he be in a magical contract if he didn't put his name in? The rules are clear. Wait, last year he couldn't go to the candy store without a permission slip. Now he's got to do a contract that he didn't even sign? Uh. And on top of that, it's a tournament he didn't even want to enter. Yeah, rather you than me. Well, everyone thinks Harry cheated and ends up rooting for Cedric, with some help from this reporter. Everyone loves the rebel Harry. But apparently none of these students can figure out that even if he did get his name in the goblet, he shouldn't have allowed another contestant. But the professors think that somehow this is related to Voldemort, so they want to see how this plays out. Offer him up as bait? The next day, Harry goes to the aviary that's covered in owl shit and gets a letter from Sirius. He wants to meet him face to face and alone. So they plan on meeting on a Saturday when none of the kids have class in the common room and he doesn't even show up in person. Sirius calls him using the fireplace. He tells Sirius about his dream and Sirius tells him that Igor, the head of Durmstrang, used to be a Death Eater. He then hangs up with him because someone's coming, but it's just Ron, who's all butthurt that Harry got picked. The next day, Ron uses Hermione to talk to Harry because he's even more madder, but they eventually get across that Hagrid's looking for him. He asks Harry to wear the invisible cloak so he can meet with Madame Maxime, and she won't see him while they cheat to find out what the first task is. They have to fight dragons, which is why Ron's mad at him, and Ron's worried that he'll get eaten, so instead of spending time with his friend that might die soon, he throws a baby fit. Might have let your best friend know though. Let you know what? Piss off. So knowing this, he tells Ron to leave him alone, even though he's already doing this. And he also tells Cedric about the dragons, so now three of the four contestants are cheating. Ooh. Malfoy tries to pick on Harry, but almost pees himself when Harry pushes back. Oh, my father will hear about this! When he tries to put a spell on Harry, Moody turns him into a ferret and shoves him down Crab's pants. Moody then takes Harry to his bedroom to figure out how to beat the dragon. So basically without the whole Ron and Hagrid thing, Harry would have still found out that it was a dragon and that was pointless. Is that right? Well, what? So they have to get a golden egg from a specific dragon and if they don't, they might not be able to do the next trial. Harry is up and almost dies immediately. It might have been nice if his best friend, whose brother raises dragons for a living, would have offered him some inside information. Brother Charlie had to bring him over from Romania. Didn't Ron tell you that? But Harry gets his broom and flies away, making the dragon break its chain and almost kills all the teachers. Hooray! <laughs> They go onto the Hogwarts roof, where I would hate to be the guy who has to re-shingle this. And then Harry knocks the dragon out with a bridge. He then goes back to get the egg that just yells at him for their clue. Pirate, you put your name in the cupboard of fire. So now that he beat the dragon, all the girls in school and this kid Nigel have crushes on him. Potter is a boy, not a piece of meat. So we find out that there's a dance on Christmas Eve, since apparently wizards don't celebrate with their families anymore. Happy Christmas. And now, Harry and Ron have to ask out girls, which seems like it would be pretty easy now that all the girls like Harry. Soon, we must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. Hi, Harry. They're so chicken that they wait till the last minute, when most people already have dates, and you'd think for people in Gryffindor, you know, the house known for bravery, that they would be the first ones to get dates. So Harry asks Cho, near the always romantic owl shit, and Ron attempts to ask Floor, but both of these end up sounding like this. You can use my office and afterwards maybe we can go to lunch. Just so slipped out. Yeah, he pretty much yelled it. Actually, he sort of screamed at her. It was a bit frightening. And then Ron explains to everyone that he's an ass man. You know, I like it when they walk. So I always like looking at them from behind. But Harry ends up asking these twins out for him since they're both package deals. But when they get there, the janitor's with his cat, Moody's hitting the sauce like usual, Cedric is with Harry's crush, and Hermione's with Ron's crush. Victor, I love you. Victor, I do. After ruining the twins and Hermione's night, the boys go to bed where Harry has another nightmare. But he gets woken up when Neville comes in and brags about what a good time he had with Ron's sister. Now where I come from is called doing the hibbity-dibbity. They're just two days away from the next challenge, and Cedric tells him to take a bath. The toilet ghost tells him to put the egg in the water, but she only knows this because she was watching Cedric take a bath. Who knows how he figured it out. Who, who could possibly figure that out? That's completely mental. It's very common. You can Google it. He finds out that the next challenge is underwater, and Neville tells him about this plant that lets him breathe underwater after Harry yells at him. But I really don't care. So this weed gives you gills and flippers for an hour, 
which is exactly how long they have to complete the task. Very convenient weed. So after swimming for a bit, Harry finds out that they drowned Ron, Hermione, Cho, and some other chick, and they have to save them. He tries to get Ron and Hermione, but a mermaid tries to kill him when he doesn't know which friend he should save. They're my friends. We're all best friends. It's not exactly fair that every other contestant has a defined person that they're supposed to save. I mean, what if he cared about Hermione or Cho more? I didn't ask for this to happen, Ron. Cedric comes to get Cho because she was his date, and Shark Crumb comes to get Hermione because that was his date to the dance, and apparently he has no friends from his own school, so Harry has to get Ron because he was basically his date at the dance. Yeah, that's me. Ron Weasley, Harry Potter's stupid friend. But he tries to take the random chick too, since he has no clue that Fleur's been knocked out of the race. <laughs> So as he's taking both of them up, these squid things attack him, and he lets Ron and Random Chick go to the surface. His gillyweed's wearing off, and now he's covered in squid hickeys, so he's sinking, but at the last minute uses magic to get out on time. It appears that Fleur's chick was her sister, and I guess she was just gonna die since she dropped out. You saved her even though she wasn't yours to save. And because of this, they end up giving Harry second place. So they can risk the champions' lives because they entered, but they can endanger the other kids' lives just for fun. I volunteer as tribute! That night, Harry finds Mr. Crouch is dead in the woods, and he goes to talk to Dumbledore. He's with Moody and the minister, and they're discussing whether to cancel the tournament. But they said it was a magical contract that they couldn't get out of. Well, they're not going to do it anyway because the minister wants to save his reputation. I will not be seen as a coward! Minister, off to you. What did you say? Dumbledore walks him out, leaving Harry alone in his office, and he finds a cauldron that shows him the trial of Igor as a Death Eater. To get out of jail, he tells him that the emo guy from the mansion isn't Robert Smith at all, but he's Crouch's son, and a Death Eater. A Death Eater who used the Krakusius... Kr whatever curse. The Cruciatus. And of course Neville knows this, because that's the spell that Barty Crouch Jr. used to torture his parents. He then tells Dumbledore about his dream, and he says he's going to look into it. But I don't know why he doesn't have Harry put his memory into the pensive so he has all the information. It doesn't help. Harry then gets stopped by Snape, who accuses him of stealing from the supply closet and making polyjuice potions. He also tells him that there's a potion to make you tell the truth. Oh, is that truth serum? But they're not allowed to use it on students. But he might go ahead and do it anyway if more crap goes missing. And they say I'm mad! The next day is the next event, and this time, they have no hints or way of cheating. It's a maze, and they just have to find the Triwizard Cup, but they might go crazy looking for it. And this event also has stadium seating for an audience that can't see what's happening, so they're just staring at a bush. I mean, it's a pretty interesting wall. So this actually marks the third event that no one was able to watch Harry do anything. I can't see him. He's a cheat! Harry goes inside, and Cedric finds out that the bushes will squish you if you go the wrong way. Victor zaps Floor and lets the plants eat her. So essentially, she's pretty much useless. That's a good idea. Catch a little shut eye. Save your energy for those horrendous farts. Harry's nice enough to call a medic for her, and then he bumps into Cedric and Crumb fighting. Cedric takes out Victor, and then he and Harry start fighting while running for the cup. Cedric trips and starts getting wrapped in the vines, and now he's torn between helping Cedric and winning. But he decides to save him, so Cedric wants to let him win. But Harry insists they grab it together. But it turns out that the cup is actually a port key, and they get transported to the cemetery where Peter Pettigrew comes out with baby Voldemort and kills Cedric. And then he dies. He then goes after Harry and has Tom Riddle's tombstone hold him while he makes a Voldemort soup. Uh, no thank you. Peter cuts off his own hand and then cuts Harry to make Voldemort full size. But I guess he didn't use enough blood because when he comes back, he doesn't have a nose. I bet that cleared your sinuses, eh? Voldemort uses Peter's tattoo to call the Death Eaters and then takes away their masks for not trying to find him. Lucius is one of them and Grovel's telling him all the stuff he's done trying to get him back. And this makes Voldemort happy and he gives Peter his hand back. He then tells Harry that because his mom sacrificed herself to save him, her love is what protected him. But since he used Harry's blood in the spell, the mommy magic won't work anymore. And to prove this, he shoves his finger in a scar and then wants to fight him. Why doesn't he just kill him? Shut up. He's got to prove to everybody he can beat him. The Dark Lord, that is considered one of the most powerful wizards of all time, wants to prove that he can beat a 14-year-old boy. Yes. And he does it in the most come-at-me-bro way. Get a one, Potter! I said pick it up! 
and they use their best spells against each other. And we see that the kill anyone spell is just as good as the drop your wand spell. Magic way beyond the talents of a fourth year. But then the ghosts of his parents show up and tell him to run to the cup. And Cedric's ghost is like, hey, can you take my dead body back too? And the ghost of the cemetery maintenance guy is also there. Bloody kids. So Harry gets back to Cedric's body and calls for the cup. And when he gets back, he finds out that everybody's happy that Cedric's dead. <laughs> I mean, they're happy that Harry won. They then see that Cedric's dead, and everyone just watches his dad cry. Oh, for God's sake, pull yourself together, man. Harry tells everybody that Voldemort's back, and then Moody takes Harry back to his bedroom and locks the door. He starts having what looks like alcohol withdrawals, but it's actually his polyjuice wearing off, and he tells him that this was his plan all along to bring Voldemort back. See, he was the one who put Harry's name in the cup, but then the professors burst in, and Dumbledore gives him that potion that Snape told Harry about earlier. They sound like true serum to me. Right? The real Moody has been in a trunk, and the fake Moody was Crouch Jr., who apparently broke out of Azkaban, and no one's noticed for an entire school year. Any theories on how he might have managed it? Many. Each as unlikely as the next. So this elaborate plan could have been easily foiled by Cedric getting to the cup first, when in the past nine months, he could have turned anything into a port key and just been like, Sip. End of story. <laughs> Goodbye, the end. The next morning, all three schools gather for a nice respectful memorial to Cedric. Cedric Diggory was murdered by Lord Voldemort. Dumbledore makes sure Harry is okay and then tells him some serious shit is about to go down. Everything is going to change now, isn't it? Yes. Promise you'll subscribe. I'll at least like the video. Harry will, won't you? Yeah, every week. Do not do so lightly. There's no turning back. Go. Now.